she has this kind of ladder of participation. So you go from inactive to spectator to join Collectors are people who, um, well, joiners are people who join social networks and things like that. Collectors are your kind of bookmarkers, so like delicious and things like that, dig. Critics are people who post reviews, <coughs> and obviously you can, you can belong to more than one of these groups. And creators are you know, people who create video and, and photos and blogs and upload and those. So she kind of suggests that you, that you need to help people through this this ladder. So you, you take people from inactives to spectators to joiners and so on. Next slide is probably most useful. And this is something we'll come back to um, probably in about 10 minutes probably. The user engagement study suggests a, a post process, POST process for social media strategy. Assessing how your targeted audience use online capabilities, social media capabilities, that's for people. Your objectives are what you want to accomplish, your strategy, how um, social media will affect your relationships with your audience. So I think values and, and uh, rules are particularly important. There. And then once you've, you've identified your people, your objectives and your strategy, only then do you think about technology. So it might be the technology is email or forums, it might be it's Facebook, it might be Flickr, YouTube, blogs, whatever. So what I'm going to ask you to do in about 10 minutes is, is look at that for your own project. Project. Um, just a few more points about community managers. You're going to have to decide if you're doing a solo project, then you will be the community manager. If you're in a group project, you might want to identify who is going to perform that role particularly. And Angela Connor and many other people make this point that a, a successful community manager is in the community and setting a good example. Yeah, I think it's the experience is that when you when you start in an online community, you you have to establish the culture of that community, and, um, and that's again about values and, and rules, and that's implicit to begin with generally, and that's about setting an example. I think Seismic did this really well because they what they did is they limited how many people could join, and they let it grow through people's contacts. It's a, it's a classic kind of beta invite and you get five invites and you invite people who represent the values that you want your community to represent and they're, they're going to be in communities with other people with similar values so then you get this community which is able to, to police itself and have a strong enough identity that people that don't fit those values don't join those communities or don't stick around so Seismic did this very well Seismic's got a, a reputation for being particularly Kind of intelligent conversation, um, you know, it's not like YouTube kind of thing. Well, not like like YouTube, but YouTube is the kind of free for all, it's notoriously flamey comments and abusive comments. Seasonic took a very different approach, and, and that's kind of what we did with Help Investigators as well. Is we, we, were, we, and still are very careful that the culture of the, of the site is strong enough so that if someone comes along with something libelous for example or whatever, then it's, it's not going to necessarily fit in. So, and then there's, there's all these uh, guidelines, I think this is from the community group, okay. and they suggest having clear policies to start with so you know what your community is, but those aren't set in stone so much for that uh, users can't contribute to that. So you're inviting users to contribute to your values, which again is like these rough edges that people can attach onto and feel some ownership. They say you should actively recruit members, welcome new people, greet them, provide different ways to participate. I think this is really important. So some people will be great at writing lengthy blog posts, some people will just want to put status updates, some people communicate visually with photographs, videos, um, voting, bookmarking, friending, you know, there's all kinds of different activities and, and the more of those you can have, then the more ways that people can find a, a way to participate. They suggest you highlight good practice uh, within 
the community and reward that. A classic media example is to cross publish into print or to have awards or invite people to events. So. Anticipate problems that you're going to get. So, for, to give a personal example, to help me investigate, before we even started building it, we had 13 user profiles of people that we thought would, would come, be attracted to the site. Um, some of them we didn't necessarily want. So, you had conspiracy theorists, you had a hoax, um, you had the, the journalist who just wants to um, take from it and not put anything into it. So it was anticipating what those people would do and how you could structure the site and the strategy to ensure that, for example, those particular users were, were discouraged. Um, going offline is, is a common thing, really important to meet people in person. Jo Geary did this really well in Birmingham and she's clearly doing it really well for times in, in terms of having events and meeting people in person. Uh, I was thinking the other day, how many Twitter users I've met in person. It's over a hundred, it's really bizarre. <laughs> I'm not a social person, but anyway. Filtering tools can play a really valuable role. Um, so, you know, there'll be certain words that, that set off an alarm, if you like, on someone's computer and say, check this, like Israel, is, is always a, what's um, the word? Something that, a touch stone. Something that always sparks off healthy debate. Mm -hmm. um, and going where the reader is, so leaving your castles and, and going to forums and blogs and so on and distributing yourself. There's, there's a whole that model for the 21st century newsroom has this the second part is about distributing journals, which is about that kind of process of where you go as a journalist, you distribute yourself to become members of communities and become that one percent if you like in those communities so that you, you contribute value. Um, so um, the last point I think is it Kate? Hello. That's perfect time. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> The last point, some, I think someone asked right at the beginning about how you make money from the community. There's, there's a list here from Richard Millington, who writes a blog called Fever Bee, which is a really good um, blog on the area. He wrote a blog post, 40 Ways to Make Money from Community. I've kind of brought some of them together because right. some of them go under the same heading. So he's got sell community bracelets, sell t-shirts, sell yearbooks, sell limited edition products, sell posters. Those are five different ways, but I've just lumped them into one, sell things, effectively. So I've just picked out 24 here. There's a, these are a number of ways to make money from, from online communities. 